animal law is is a tricky area because it's so cross, uh, I guess, disciplinary um, in terms of law. And, you know, lawyers usually like focus on one particular area like property law or criminal law or, you know, a certain certain area and animal law cuts across all of those because animals are property. But then, you know, if if you're talking about activists who are going in and taking footage and then there's the ag gag laws and that's, you know, going into criminal law or all different um, areas. So I think um, we recognize that it's, um, it's kind of a complex and, and um, challenging area of law to, to start building up. Um, and, it's really important to get young lawyers across all these different issues. Uh, and so it's, it's the power of, of youth on the one hand, it's like when you, you know, engage um, people in university or at schools, you're, you're helping to form their future selves. And these young lawyers are going to be out in the workplace, working at corporate law firms or working in government. And, um, and they're now going to be equipped with this really comprehensive understanding of the failures of the law to protect animals, which is really what it is. So it's not really animal law. It's kind of like how the law needs to be reformed to actually protect animals, even in the most basic of capacities. Because at the moment, farmed animals get pretty much zero protection under the law. Um, they're exempt from all the animal cruelty, you know, legislations. Um, so, uh, so our strategy was really to, to I, I guess, like we we were trying to do with the movement to try and build up this, you know, growing population of animal lawyers um, who will then be out in in the world and. Um, you know, pushing back possibly, be it government or corporate or using their skills to be pushing forward uh, law reforms for animals. Um, and and it's been really like our most successful area of Voiceless's work. I mean, lawyers just, especially young lawyers, just love this area. You know, often people go into law full of kind of idealism and wanting to do something good, but they have a bit of a bad rep at the end. But, um, you know, they're often like really passionate people who want to, who are interested in social change and social justice, and uh, they love the area of animal law. And so it's just been, you know, it's just been exploding, really. Um, so universities are all taking it up and uh, and law firms are springing up that are focusing on animal law or dedicating whole, you know, areas to a pro bono, you know, support for, for animal organizations. I mean, Voiceless, we have, at some point, we had too many law firms offering to support us for free. <laughs> we had to turn <laughs> some down. So, um, so it's been really hardening to see this area. Uh, and, you know, lawyers, for good or for bad, are often kind of put on a bit of a test pedestal in our society. You know, they're seen as kind of these very educated and, you know, empowered people. And so back to my very early point of trying to mainstream the movement, once you get also like a, a army of lawyers involved in fighting for animals, um, it really disrupts this, this kind of... Um, view or this stereotype that animal rights or animal protection is for the hippies, extremists, radicals, you know, like bludgers, because <laughs> they're all, you know, they're in their corporate suits and ties and, you know, uh, looking very serious and very uh, articulate. And so I think it's done, done one, a wonderful thing for the movement, having this growth in animal law. 